uh, we've already introduced friction and we said that it has to do with the fact that at the microscopic level you have these bumps and ridges and troughs as well as some intermolecular forces, so forces between molecules, that cause a resistance to sliding. And we actually split those resistances into two main categories. We had a static case where we have the friction that acts while stationary, and we had the kinetic case where the friction acts during motion. So let's go on and review what or what is different about these two. So kinetic friction, of course, is our sliding friction. And every single friction we have depends on really two things. It depends on the materials that are in contact with each other, and it depends on the force that is pressing the two surfaces together. So we see that in both of these equations for the kinetic and the static friction. So what is the difference between the two? Well, firstly, kinetic friction tends to be smaller than static friction. So most of the time, pardon me, most of the time our kinetic friction is going to be smaller than our static friction for any particular pair of objects and any particular normal force. So the only difference really is, is my object moving or is it stationary? So if it's moving, all I need to do is know the normal force and the coefficient of kinetic friction to calculate a kinetic friction force. For static friction, it's a little more complicated because if you see in this, our static friction is actually only calculated as a maximum static friction. So this is the maximum force that friction can provide to resist moving. So let's see how that works. Well. If I am looking at static friction, I'm looking at an object that is stationary. So here is my object. It is stationary. I'm going to apply some force to this object, and friction is going to resist. So if I'm talking about static friction, we'll say that there is this friction force going this way, static friction force. And as I apply more and more force, my static friction force will increase in order to combat my applied force. But at some point, right here, we are actually at our maximum value. So it's our maximum static friction. And that is where mu s times n tells me my static friction. Before that, it's whatever is required to keep me stationary. Beyond this, you see that we actually have the force of friction dropping off. So here is my kinetic friction region, and as soon as I start moving, it now requires less force to keep me going, essentially, because my kinetic friction is smaller than my static friction. So you can kind of see, looking through all of these example coefficients of friction, that coefficient of friction tends to be between 0 and 1 for most cases, uh, there is some situations where rubber is a little bit more sticky, so to speak. So rubber is a pretty good um, friction force, if that makes any sense. This is why we use it on tires. So going on, let's actually take a look at static and kinetic friction in a situation here. So I have this box. It is a 10 kilogram box. I'm going to go ahead and draw a free body for it. I'm going to draw it up here on the right. So I have mg acting downward. Draw that a little better. I have a normal force acting upward. I have an applied force to the right. And I have a friction force to the left. So I'm given that mu of static friction is actually 0.4. And the mu for kinetic friction is 0.3. So here are my two mu's. Now, when I go back and look at this problem, I'm looking for the force of friction depending on the force that I am exerting on it. So I'm going to go ahead and calculate my static friction force and my kinetic friction force. So my kinetic friction and my static friction are both dependent on mu and normal force. So this is my maximum 
static friction force is going to be mu s times n. And so for me, that's going to be 0.4 times my normal force. Oh, I don't have my normal force. Well, let's go over here real quick. In the y direction, I have a normal force acting upward. I have mg acting downward. And this is in the y direction. And there is no acceleration in the y direction. My box is not lift lifting up off of the ground. So my normal force in this case is just equal to mg. So my normal force is actually 10 times, we're going to use 9.8 here because it becomes significant for this example problem. So my normal force is 98 newtons. So now I have 0.4 times 98. And so my static friction max, my Fs max, is going to be 39.2 newtons. Now my kinetic friction force is going to be mu k times normal force. So here I have 0.3 times my 98. So my kinetic friction force, and this is not fk max, it is just fk, is 29.4 newtons. So let's go through these. So for the case of A, my applied force is less than the maximum static friction. So because that is the case, so FA is less than FS maximum, because of this, that means my object's not going to move. So I'm actually going to see that in any situation where I have not applied enough force to get it to move, I am going to be stationary. So if I apply zero newtons of force, the friction force is just going to be zero because of this situation right here, where in the x direction, my applied force minus my friction force is equal to ma. So if I'm not moving, it's equal to zero, and my applied force is equal to my friction force. So for the case of a, where I only apply zero newtons, then my friction force is zero. When I apply 10 newtons, my friction force is 10 newtons. When I apply 20 newtons, my friction force is 20 newtons. When I apply just barely underneath the static friction force, then I am still not moving. So I am applying 38 and I'm getting 38 newtons back in friction force, resisting my motion. So as soon as I go beyond my maximum friction force, I know that I'm gonna start moving. So all of a sudden, what is happening? I'm using kinetic friction. So now my force of friction is equal to that of my kinetic friction. So because I'm moving an E, my frictional force is my kinetic friction. So now let's move on and take a look at a situation where we're actually kind of calculating things. So for this one, we're gonna calculate the coefficients of friction. So I have a 500 Newton crate. So remember when I describe something as a 500 Newton something, then I am talking about the weight. So this right here, my weight, is 500 newtons. So when I draw my free body, I'm gonna label it like that. To start the crate moving, I have to pull with a 230 newton horizontal force. All right, so let's see. We have a normal force here, and then we have some pulling force, and this whole thing is about friction, so we're gonna assume that there is some kind of frictional force this way. So to start it moving, I have to apply 230 newton force. So what does that tell me? Well, that tells me that my 230 newton force is going to be equal to my static friction maximum. So I can actually say that my static friction maximum is going to be equal to mu s times my normal force. So my mu that I'm looking for here is my static friction maximum over the normal force. So substituting here, I'm just going to have 230 over my, oh, I need to get my normal force. So how do I get normal? Well, the sum of forces in the y direction is going to be normal force minus weight is equal to ma in the y. And I am not accelerating in the y direction, right? I am not lifting up off the ground. So my normal force is equal to my weight, which is 500 newtons. So I go back and I'm dividing 230 by 500, and you see that this just works out to be 0.46. So one of the things that's important to point out here is that 
my coefficient of friction actually does not have a unit, right? This is a Newton, this is a Newton, and those Newtons cancel out. So static friction for, or sorry, static friction coefficient has no units whatsoever. So now let's do the same thing for the coefficient of kinetic friction. So once it starts to move, I can keep it moving with a constant velocity of 200 Newtons. So here I'm thinking, all right, F of X, so sum of forces in the X direction is going to be my pulling force minus my kinetic friction force is equal to MA X. And they just told me that this acceleration is zero because I'm moving at a constant velocity. So my pulling force is equal to my kinetic friction, which is in this case equal to 200 Newtons. So kinetic friction is gonna be equal to mu K times my normal force or mu k is equal to my kinetic friction force divided by my normal force. So now I just substitute 200 newtons divided by my 500 newton normal force is going to give me a coefficient of kinetic friction of 0 0.40. So here are my answers, 0 0.40, 0 0.46, and this is actually not very difficult to figure out um, coefficients of kinetic friction.